that. Now, uh, just to uh, go to our final topic of the day for me today, and that is the former Home Secretary, Swella Bravman, saying that the government should change the Equality Act to ensure the rights of women are properly protected by the law. The uh, production team wrote the words biological women, but we know what a woman is. There's only one kind. Women. So joining me right now to discuss this is Maya Forstatter. She's executive director of Sex Matters and joins us now. Hello, Maya. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Julia. I really appreciate it. There's lots more other things I want to talk to you about, but about this. Um, why does the Equality Act need changing? Because it's become confused. The Equality Act defines the protected characteristic of sex as being a man or a woman, male or female. Uh, but because of the Gender Recognition Act, which has allowed about 5,000 people to get a certificate saying that they are the opposite sex, everyone has got confused about what uh, the protected characteristic of sex means in the Equality Act. And that has knock-on effects for women's services, sports, uh, things like searching by the police or examination by a doctor, anything where you're dealing with officialdom and you want to be able to say, um, I'm a woman, I'm expecting a single sex service, uh, they, they've all become completely confused and the law, it needs to go back to Parliament, the law needs to sort it out. Well, I mean, this is the thing, isn't it? Because then people talk about the difference between gender and sex and, you know, what do you, what do you, what you take, the gender you can identify. You can identify as whatever you want, but you, but you don't get to identify your biological sex. You are that. It's not, it's not assigned at birth, it's what you are and it's what you are for your entire life. But the gender recognition uh, certificates, as you say, about 5,000 people have those, um, I mean, again, they, they became a big issue, didn't they, in Scotland about, you know, a 16-year-old being able to do it without even, you know, uh, seeing a doctor. Um, but someone getting a gender recognition uh, certificate uh, that basically have changed sex, is it that they've changed sex rather than gender? Because, you know, we've got this issue with India Willoughby threatening the, to, the, with the, to the police, um, J.K. Rowling, for saying that India Willoughby who is a man and lives as, a, as if he was a woman, but is a, is a man, saying, well, no, actually, legally, I'm a, I'm a woman. I've got a birth certificate saying it. I've got a passport saying it. I'm a woman. So what is the legal status there? Well, I mean, of course, they haven't changed sex. You and I both know people can't change sex, whether they have uh, plastic surgery or not, or take hormones or not. But they do have a piece of paper that has been issued by the government that says it changes their sex for all purposes. Uh, and that means all legal purposes. But in fact, it doesn't even mean all legal purposes, because for the purpose of... Uh, um, taking a period, for example, or for sex crimes, it goes back to your actual sex. And also yeah. for being a mother or father, it goes back to your actual sex. So it's really not clear what for all purposes means. It would be much clearer could be... if people couldn't change any well, official absolutely. documentation. Now, I, I was absolutely. very supportive of this at the time when it was sort of the idea that someone who, you know, had, had gone through lots of surgery, if they complete appearances, if they were a, a man that was living as a woman uh, and, and, and trans woman and genuinely did appear to be a woman, um, and then, you know, you're in passport control in a foreign country, like what prison you'd get into. I, I, I always felt very supportive of that. And then, of course, we've seen the explosion of people claiming this right. And it's no longer people who we would feel very sympathetic and respectful and kind towards. It's people, frankly, taking the mick and using it as a cunning way of getting out of a harder prison and pretending that they think that they're women to try and get off, you know, violent sex crimes and the like. It's been exploited. Does that not mean we should just get rid of it entirely? I think I think there's a good argument for that. Um, I mean, I think we can't distinguish between people that we feel personal sympathy for and people we think are taking the mick. The basic question is, are people male or are they female? And that can't change. And then, as you say, there are people who dress differently. There are people who change their name, change their hairstyle, may have plastic surgery. Um, you know, they may feel very genuine about it or they may not. Who am I to judge? And those people should definitely be able to get on a plane. Uh, they should definitely be able to have a passport. They should be able to go to a hospital. They should be able to get a job. They should be able to do all of those things. Um, but that doesn't mean that they've changed sex. And so either, as you say, we have to get rid of the whole thing or we have to find ways to um, 
to see through this legal fiction because what yeah. it is is a legal fiction and, and, and that for is example the key thing, isn't somebody it? get married in that sex yeah. um and it's very difficult to take away a legal fiction when you've allowed someone to get married but the point is when it relates to other people and other people's privacy and dignity we have to be able to look through the legal fiction yeah and again not privacy and dignity but also even their safety in terms of access to say you know women's shelters uh, women's prison places and the like um we did have look i i, I still find this unbelievably frustrating we're still in this mad of you know, when people talk about gender critical feminists, no people who understand facts and know. I, I, I don't believe that a trans woman is a woman. I, I, I as, as a man, I know this is a, is a fact. But I mean, we've had some victories this week. The, the puberty blockers uh, decision by NHS England uh, that in England uh, patients under eighteen are not going to be able to give an, uh, puberty blockers apart from clinical research. Still a bit unhappy about that. We've had enough clinical research. We know they're dangerous. We know they're harmful. They don't make people happier. That they should not be prescribed to any child. In my view at all. I'm pretty concerned about them being prescribed to adults as well under false pretenses. But do you think this is, we are sort of, if not, if not at the beginning of the end, we're at the end of the beginning in this fight back for sanity? Yes, I think this is hugely significant. Um, both the NHS move and also the school's guidance, um, which is saying that teachers shouldn't uh, treat children as having changed sex are, are hugely significant because these are experiments that have been played out on our children um, without without evidence. And that is now clear and it's caused harm. Um, and so unpicking that from the National Health Service, um, from the schools and education uh, is going to be a huge job, but it's definitely the end of the beginning. Yeah, except we still have things in the NHS in England where, you know, they, they have issue statements, new leaflets and advice online saying things like, you know, menopause doesn't only affect women, unless we're talking about men having a midlife crisis. If you're talking about the flushes and the end of your periods, yeah. It only affects women. But they still push this mad ideology that is medically and scientifically untrue. Yes, I mean, you know, it's an organisation of two million people and this ideology is seeped throughout it. So you have the minister saying the NHS should use clear sex-based language, but you have... Uh, activists within the NHS are still going to be pushing this. They're still going to be pushing, uh, you know, women and birthing people yeah. and men can get pregnant and all, all of that nonsense. And that, that really has to go. We, I mean, we can be, institutions should be inclusive of people who have all kinds of beliefs and mental health issues uh, and lifestyles, but that doesn't mean they should throw out no. the word woman, which no. is very and clear. And I don't mind at the end of a leaflet about prostate cancer. And, and if you're living as a trans woman, you need to get your prostate checked. And uh, if you're living as a trans man, yeah, by the way, you need to go and you know get your cervical smear. That, again, Absolutely. But that's, that's fact-based stuff. I mean, do you think do you think we are going to get to the point when, I mean, we're actually going to win this? Or we've got new extremism definition. We're told it won't apply to you know women like you and me, or indeed uh, to, the, uh, to the trans activists, the trans ideologists act Activists who, who have made life hell for an awful lot of, of women. Um, but I don't know, under a Labour government, it could happen. I, I'm quite worried about that. Um, but on the other hand, I do think things go out of fashion and yeah. things that children are now looking at non-binary and, you know, and and laughing at it and saying, you know, this gender not gender's not fluid. And, and I mean, there'll be another craze along... Uh, soon, let, but it may be that it just goes out of fashion. Yeah. Well, let, let's just hope it's a, another craze and social contagion that isn't quite as damaging to our children. You've been a fantastic fighter on this front, Maya Foster. Thank you so much. Always so good to talk to you. Uh,